Hello, good evening. You're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We are so glad to welcome you again to this time. Uh, very powerful. The Lord is bringing it up again after a series of crusades that the servants of the Lord have gone for, you know, from a uh, different place to another, one place to another place. You can join uh, in this crusade, you know, by going to uh, our, our website uh, or, or YouTube, CTFM TV, or uh, Facebook, CTFM Facebook and just uh, listen to the word of the Lord and I believe the word of the Lord is the same even though the crusade some have been passed you can listen to them and the same anointing when you believe can come your way and do something great in your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah this is online healing crusade now you know I told you that we have on ground crusade in different places wherever man is found preaching the gospel preaching the word of life and the hand of the Lord upon his servant, and the Lord confirming his words with signs for me, many deliver. And the power of the Lord that is going forth in those crusades, when you log on and listen, that power of the Lord will reach you too as you believe in the name of Jesus. But we thank God that you are here, and I believe God has brought you to this online healing crusade if you are listening to me now or hereafter. And I want to tell you one thing I want to uh, quickly. Read this scripture to you. A servant of the Lord God sent him to preach the word of life, the word of deliverance, salvation, wherever man is found. And now Jesus is coming very soon. And the devil knows his time is so short. And he's doing all kinds of evil that he can do. But God is sending out his people, his men, his servants, anointed men, to go and destabilize and shut down the works of the devil in the lives of human beings. Let me read to you what happened in Luke chapter 10. Verse 1, he said, After this thing, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them to and before his face into every city and place whither he himself will come. He appointed some and sent them. I tell you, the servants of the Lord is sent because that's what God sent him to do, to preach the gospel. And the Bible says, The word of the Lord, there are men, the word of the Lord is with them. Went to Elisha Daddy and said, Elisha, the word of the Lord is with them. When they were in trouble, they needed to hear what God is saying. How is God going to deliver them at this time? And the Bible says, let's go to the prophet. Is there not a prophet here? Elisha. The word of the Lord is with him. And of course, when they got there, the word of the Lord came out. And tonight, the word of the Lord is coming. Who is Sarah? The man we are saying. Hallelujah. Believe that God knows you are there. The Holy Spirit sees you. In fact, it's not by accident that you are there. And so when you listen with all your heart and you believe, the word of the Lord will come for you. There is a word for you tonight. Do you believe that? I pray you believe. Join me tonight to welcome the servant of the Lord, the evangelist, Mui Ulufemi Ugunari, as he brings the word of life again to us in the name of Jesus. God bless you and stay connected. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life again today. Uh, it's always our joy to have this great opportunity to bring the word of life to you anytime you have the opportunity to, just like you heard. Um, if you've not seen us for some time, uh, we are not off <laughs> dying, but we've been involved in a lot of on ground crusades uh, across the nations of the world, uh, some in Canada, some in the uh, uh, Republic of uh, Togo and Republic of Benin. And uh, now we are back. No, uh, we need to continue. Assignment is a continuous assignment. So God will do it as God has given us the grace to do. So uh, I believe that you can also get back onto all those uh, uh, crusades to uh, wherever they are, uh, both YouTube, uh, C2FM, TV, and on uh, Facebook, Global Tongues of Air Ministry on Facebook. You will get them and you can. The message of God is always fresh. So anytime you get there, you see them fresh. Amen. So let's get into the words today. Thank you, Lord. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the devil. For God was with them. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, 
who went about doing good, healing all those that are oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible says, Burdens shall be removed off your neck, and yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So, what we'll get the work of God done across the nations of the world is the anointing. The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. I define it again for you. The anointing is what? Is the burden removing and the yoke destroying power of God. The anointing is also the sickness removing, demon casting power of God. The anointing is solution provider and miracle dispenser in the power of God. So you see, whatever we need from God, we get it through His anointing. You understand what I'm saying? And the anointing was what Jesus used to manifest His ministry and to minister to people in His generation. A man cannot do anything except by reason of the anointing. Jesus Christ Himself said to us, He said, on myself, by myself, I can do nothing. But he said, because of the anointing, he is anointed to preach the gospel, to heal the broken heart, to you know, minister, uh, bring sight to the blind, and then minister the acceptable year of the Lord. So he kept repeating these things and linking them to the anointing of the Lord according. So when God sent us forth into the world to preach the gospel, and give us the ministry and the mandate of preaching this gospel, he gave us the good news of the kingdom of God. And also gave us the power of the kingdom too, with which to disseminate that truth across. I hear what I'm saying. So when the Bible says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, what was the kind of good he was doing? He was healing all that are oppressed of the devil. Jesus was healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Now, let me analyze it this way. Oppression of the devil was coming from one quarter. It was coming from the devil who has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And God is sending forth the solution to that now. He sent his son and then anointed his son with the ability to undo whatever the devil has been doing in the life of people. So a kingdom is and himself through self-destruction, causing death, causing sickness, causing diseases, causing poverty, causing limitations everywhere. That is the ministry of the devil. He has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But when Jesus Christ came, he came that we may have light and have it more abundantly. And the way he brings forth that light, you understand me, is to bring the anointing through his servant to go disseminate that kingdom and make it a kingdom of good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Bringing the word of God to people through the anointing. All right? So what was Jesus doing? He was destroying the work of the devil everywhere he's going. And uh, if you look at uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says that, this is, among other things that is written in that scripture, it says, this is the purpose, the reason for which the Son of God, of God was manifested, is to destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the works of the devil is the reason for uh, Jesus' coming. Now, I want to prove something here before I round up today. I want to prove something to you by teaching of the Word of God. And what is it? And that is that he was healing all that are oppressed of the devil because God was with him. An oppression of the devil. And you know that the Bible says that Jesus Christ healed all manner of sicknesses, all manner of diseases. You understand? All manner of sickness, all manner of... So it means all those manner of sickness and diseases were what? They were all oppressions of the devil. 
So the devil is the one oppressing man with that. But Jesus came that man might become free of that. So everywhere Jesus went to, to preach the gospel, you will see this you know, demonstration of the power of God to make people to be free. You understand me? From all those assets of the enemy. And um, that's very important for us to know that every sickness, every disease is what? It's an oppression of the devil. Every sickness, every disease is an oppression of the devil. And Jesus did all kinds of healing. For example, I'll give you about two or three in a moment. When he was to minister to the mother-in-law of uh, Peter, the Bible says that mother-in-law of Peter was sick of what? Of fever. High fever. You understand? Now, fever, the way we can look at it, look like a small sickness, as it were. Maybe it's a malaria fever. Maybe it's a yellow fever. Maybe it's a typhoid fever. We don't know what kind of fever. You understand what I'm saying? But then the Bible says, this is the fact that it was fever. Jesus did not prescribe anything to that woman but power of God. He went inside, prayed for the woman, lifted her up by touch, and that's contact and transfer of power. And then the woman was okay. When they said somebody had just died, but we know that you know, a, 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 a particular a centurion or whatever came to Jesus and said, Sir, I know that uh, the daughter right now at home has just died. You understand? But he said, if you will follow me and lay your hand on that daughter, she will be healed. Even though she's dead now. When you lay your hand, I'm sure she's going to be okay. Are you getting what I'm saying? So Jesus went with him. And on getting there, he met the daughter already dead too. And a lot of people even cried. But how did Jesus handle the matter? Set aside all those people that were crying. And then went inside. As soon as he got inside, he prayed for the person that the spirit of death will leave the lady, the small girl, and then lifted up the girl from the bed. As he did to the person that had fever, he did the same to the person that just died. So whether it is fever that looks small to us or death that looks big to us, all of them, Jesus handled them the same way. They are oppressions of the devil. They are all oppressions of the devil. That's fact I want you to sing with you today. Don't ever take one sickness to be small in your life. And never think one sickness is too big for God in your life. All of them are oppressions of the devil. But answer is in the anointing. For the Bible says he was anointed of Holy Ghost and power. Then he used that power to go and do good. What kind of good? He was not distributing food and clothes as good. He was healing those that are oppressed of the devil. That's the good that he was doing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So an oppression of the devil is an attack of the devil against humanity and against God. But healing and, uh, and, uh, and uh, deliverance from the devil is God's way of bringing his kingdom to man. That come over here, my kingdom will do you good. Everything about the kingdom of God is good news. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, uh, Job chapter 2 verse 7. I'm no proof that sickness is an oppression of the devil. And that all sickness, they are all oppressions of the devil. And deliverance from them only comes through the anointing. Okay? Now, um, Job chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says, Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boy. That's an affliction. He afflicted Job with boy. But excuse me, somebody can say boy is a small thing now. Can't you get a bam? Can't you get one rub? Can't you get one uh, cream and just rub the place? No! It won't go. If you rub it with that, he says Satan afflicted him with boy. So boy is an affliction of the devil. Boy is not just something protruding out of your skin. Mm -mm. It came from Satan. Satan came after leaving that place where I was discussing with God or whatever. Said, let, now let me go and deal with Job. He has gotten permission. So he got there and he, he smote. I think you strike somebody with something. I think you slap somebody with something. You know, or you hit somebody as if you are beating him with a rod. You beat him or strike him or hit him with boy. Sore boy. Grievous boy. Is boy not a small thing? Afterwards, it is a boy. It's not a cancer. Afterwards, it is a boy. It is not a tumor. It's a, just a boy. Any unwanted growth is of the devil. Whether as a boy or as a tumor or as a fibroid. Or I say cancer, it's of the devil. Anything growing in your body, however small or big, once it is not part of your creation, 
It's not any of the organ that God created in your body, but it's now growing there. It's of the devil. And the anointing is what destroy, destroys the yoke. The anointing is what delivers people from that oppression of the devil. So, but that's not all that the devil did. We hear news later that uh, the children of Job were sitting somewhere, somewhere and something just came from somewhere and then killed all of them. All children of this man died the same day. You think mm, it's just coincidence. There's no coincidence here. This is of the devil. The same devil that brought the boy that looks small is the one that killed all the children. And they said later, most of the places where he's doing business, all the business just collapse one day. It is of the devil. It is not of God. It is no natural occurrence. It is demonic assault. Satan that brought the boy is the Satan that killed the children. It is Satan that destroyed the business. Number three or four. The Bible says, in a short while, the wife got angry and the wife started talking against the husband. That are you still having integrity here? Are you still believing God on this matter? Which God are you believing? You are believing this God or this wife? Your children die, which you are sick now. Your body does not look like a human being anymore. And then all your business that you have, you are very rich before, you have become poor now. And you say, You see, one more God, cause your God and die. It is not that woman talking, it is the devil. The same devil that brought boy is the same devil that brought death of children. It's the same devil that brought destruction of business. It's the same devil that is bringing destruction of family. Same devil. So don't ever think one is a little man, one is higher. No, they, all of them are the same. And the Bible now told us in Job chapter 42, verse 10 to 12. Job 42, 10 to 12. Bible now says, God turned the captivity of Job. So the devil did this destruction one after the other. But one day, when the anointing, anointing of God stepped in, when the power of God stepped in, God told Job, Forgive all the people that have hurt you. Pray for those who have offended you. This is your friend that can say nonsense. If they will come and meet you now, you have pray for them back, right? Because I'm getting ready to restore you back. Everything you have lost, I want to restore you. But before then, forgive those who offend you so that there won't be offense in your heart. And then this one, and then this one. Even your wife that says something wrong, forgive her. And you get what I'm saying? Embrace everybody, let it, let it go like that. Then I can restore you. Because if you hold on forgiveness in your heart, I won't be able to bring the healing and bring it. Praise God. Eventually, when he did that, the Bible said God would turn the captivity of Job in such a way that everything he lost, God multiplied times two, double, double of the business, double of the money he used to have, double of the gold, double of the silver, double of the camel he had before, double of the cattle, double of everything, worth times two. You understand what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So if this is happening, that shows whatever the devil is doing, a one stroke of the anointing can restore everything you have lost back. One stroke of the anointing, the power of God can hit everything and bring solutions to all your problems. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I want you to have that. I want you to believe that. All right? So let's go a little further. Um, uh, in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 16, we saw a woman. The Bible says this particular woman, what happened? She was a widow. What's the meaning of that? He has lost husband. Okay, now Jesus met this woman when this woman is about to go and bury the only son, second assault of the devil. Who is the one that has come to kill, to steal, to destroy? The devil. So who killed the husband? The devil. Who is killing the son? The devil. He has just killed the son. Everybody is following him, how to go and bury the son. So the devil made her a widow. The devil was not satisfied with that. The devil now went for that to come and do what? To kill the only son. Why? The devil is after destroying this woman. The husband is the breadwinner. So the devil brought death to kill the husband. The devil came back and found out that the son has been helping the woman to survive in life. Because the son will take the responsibility of the father. And if the husband has been breadwinner, the son can also be a breadwinner for the woman. The devil came and killed the son also. Second time. You understand what I'm saying? And so, what are we doing? Now, here, Jesus met this woman. And Jesus looked at her with compassion and mercy. And Jesus was looking at the situation and said, Wow, the devil has assaulted this woman too much. But today, I'm the anointed of God. I will bring an end to everything that the devil has done in the life of this woman. 
And what did he do? He saw said people taking this corpse to burial ground. Stop the procession. Bring this boy down. They brought the boy down. He touched the boy that was dead. He's already wrapped the way, you know, uh, people in Palestine or Muslim, whatever, wrap dead body. They will wrap it in something that looks like an open coffin. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he saw the boy and then he touched the boy. And life came back. The young boy, the young boy came back to life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So again, we see something here. He said, he now gave the boy back to the mom and said, woman, weep no more. What is the meaning of that? I know you have been weeping for a long time. Since your husband died, you have been weeping. The devil brought another thing that will make you weep. I have not brought things that will make you weep. I have brought joy. I have brought what will make you happy. I'm the propagator of good news. And my good news to you is, this death that is assaulting your life, bring killing your husband, killing your son, it comes to an end today. Your son will no more be buried just around the place where they buried your husband a few months ago or, 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 or less than a year. Because if they call her a widow, it means she's still wearing the clothes of a widow. She has not finished mourning the death of the husband. The devil brought the death of the son. So he said, they are not buried that boy there. You are going back home with your son. Son, you will leave. You can take care of this woman. Say, weep no more. So who did the first killing? Devil. Who did the second killing? Devil. But if we go to the story, we may find out that maybe a sickness killed the husband, maybe an accident killed the son. But those are just physical things that devil is using to do a demonic thing. It is still the devil that killed the first one, that killed the second one. But the situation that led to their death can be anything. You can categorize it under any of heaven. But it is the devil that is the author of it all. One intelligent devil is the one going after everything that will bring joy to this woman and destroy them. Are you hearing me? This is what I want you to see today. And I'm going to pray for you today. Very seriously. I, it's not how long my message is, but I, I always have something God wants me to pass across. So if you have blindness, I will tell you it is caused by spirit of blindness. If you have deafness, I will tell you it is caused by spirit of deafness. If you have ordinary cough, it is caused by spirit of cough. If you have small kata, kata is caused by spirit of kata. You have just headache, there is no headache anywhere, but the devil brought it. When Adam was with God in the garden of Eden, where God created them to be, there was no sickness in their life until men fell. If man has not fallen, sickness has not come here. If man has not fallen, death has not come here. So you don't tell me that this sickness is small, so I will use Panadol. This other, this other one is big, so I will use uh, this one. That other one is higher, so I will use a uh, surgery. This other one is very great, so I'm going to use it. No! All sickness is of the devil. He is the source of all evil. But man, don't easily identify that. Instead of saying it is the devil, they say it's uh, maybe God's provision. Maybe it is uh, circumstances that cause it. Maybe it is coincidence. Maybe it's whatever. But to me, all affliction is from the devil. God never created a man that gives one suffering in his life. Poverty is not of God. Poverty is not an economic condition. It's a demonic attack. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything the devil has been using to assault human beings since the fall of man, the devil caused it. And God sent us to redeem man from that. That's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That's what he gave unto us as mandate to go and do in the world. As I was coming here today, I had this understanding. There is somebody that is having blood flowing from the nose. Is that normal? No. And it's such that if he's standing up, he will not feel it. If he's doing a lot of things, he will not feel it. The moment he tries to bend down, the thing will start dripping from the nose. I don't know what condition the doctors will call it, but I know it's a spirit of sickness. God deliver you from that sickness right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody else that it's not about whether you eat or you know it. It's not about whether somebody is fasting or not. It's that it seems as if instead of brain being in your head, it's like the place is empty at times. You feel as if there's nothing there. As if you are light, but the lightness is not coming from under. The lightness is coming from the head. You are feeling light from your head. As if in a moment you can gas out. In a moment you can, maybe you lose, you lose balance or something. 
or in some moment it's like you are no more here physically. I don't have to explain it, but you that I'm talking about, you understand what I'm saying. That at times your head seems to be empty. It seems as if the whole of your head is no more there. You understand what I'm saying? What is causing it? I don't know the medical terminology, but I know it's an attack of the devil. Something wants you to want to make you lose your life before it's time. It's coming different times. I've been assaulting your mind with that kind of thing. You find out that you're okay today. And after some time, it's like, this is your head. You don't know what's wrong. It's like it's no more there. But the head is there. But that feeling is a demonic attack that is coming through your mind. It can turn to madness. It can turn to sudden death. Are you getting what I'm saying? But whatever the devil is programming you for, I bind that devil in the name of Jesus. I cause him to lose a leko riasita rike diata karo that is like a band around that your head. Band. You know when people are doing wrestling, that's the way you can put your arm around somebody's neck and in a short while, he may not be able to breathe or something except he starts banging the ground. I don't know what, what maybe arm lock or something. So there's a lock around that head. It's a demonic lock. I break that lock in the name of Jesus. Loose this man and let him go free in Jesus' name. So one is about blood in the nose. One is about head that looks like it's empty. But I got this real behind it now. Are you getting what I'm saying? That this other person that um, is not, you can't see a physical body. But it's like something is all over your body that itches you. So it doesn't matter how goodly you are dressed or how you are so composed, you start scratching your body. But if you look at what you are scratching, there's no physical rashes or anything. But that scratch is from underneath the skin. I command that spirit, I send against you, embarrassing spirit, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Loose you from that bond, from that bondage in the name of Jesus. Be free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. That is this other woman, a matured woman, that is no more in primary school level, that is no more in secondary school level, you are in a university level, but you urinate. What kind of something embarrassing is that? The anointing of God is coming right now to deliver you from that oppression. It's not a physical sickness, it's a demonic sickness. I pound that spell in the name of Jesus. Loose her and let her go. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you again for today. Thank you for the entrance of your word that gives understanding to the simple. Bless you for what you have shared with us today and for the people we have ministered to. May these things remain permanent in your life in the name of Jesus. If you have any uh, uh, sickness, I'm going to pray for you, apart from the one I mentioned. But before then, I want to leave you to Jesus. If you are healed of all sicknesses but you lose your soul in eternity, what a great loss. You gain health or you lose the whole life. I just have to say, what shall you profit a man if he gains the whole world and then he loses his soul? For that not to happen, I want to pray with you. You want this Jesus that he loves, that deliver us, that no make us free? You want him in your life. Okay? You have to open the door of your life to him and welcome him inside. He has finished the job on the cross of Calvary, but we are making the proclamation for you that you may know that whatever I need to be saved is already done on the cross. Let me pray with you. I will just lead you to him, right? He is the Savior. I'm not. But I'm the one that midwife you to bring you out from where you need to be to what God wants you to be. Shall we pray? Say the following words after me if you need that Jesus in your life right now. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. You died on the cross of God. You shed your blood to take away my sin. Today, I accept you as my Lord and I accept you. And my Savior. And I ask that you watch me clean from this life that I've been living. And give me a new slate of life. A new beginning in the name of Jesus. Give me the power to go and sin no more. Write my name in the book of life. And from today, according to your word, whoever believes in you, they become sons of God. Make me a member of your family as a son in the name of Jesus. And give me the power not only to go and sin no more, but to keep serving you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have prayed that prayer, I know something happened to you. Definitely from the Spirit of God. And then you need to know how to go about your Christian life to be solidified in faith. That's why we go to church. We find a church that is word preaching, word based, anointed pastor to be under, to groom you. But in between now and then, you need us to give us a book, give you a book. I have a book I've written that can help you. Power to maintain your salvation. After you have been saved, how do you maintain it so they don't take it from you? That book is available. You made the request, we're going to send it to you. 
But what if you have other sickness apart from the one I just mentioned by word of knowledge? I'm going to pray with you. Place your hand wherever the sickness is and believe with me that it is an attack of the devil, it is an oppression of the devil, and the anointing is what destroyed the yoke of that sickness. He will destroy it for you now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of sickness, disease, and infirmity, whichever of those spirit of sicknesses and disease and infirmity is afflicting any of these people that need your hand now. Lord, I say, devil, listen to me. The Bible says you will hear my voice. You will fade away from your hiding places. Wherever you are hiding in their body, I command you, lose your grip in the name of Jesus. Lose them and let them go free. For Jesus has freed them on the cross of Calvary already. They, he said, it is finished. So it is finished. Everything about this sickness is finished. Every, everything about this infirmity is finished. Everything about this affliction is finished. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. From this moment onward, be free, be loosed, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be made whole and be totally restored to the former level you were before sickness came. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.